Okay, so okay, hello everyone. So today I'm gonna try to cover the chapter four, like a data set and model. This chapter is actually just kind of a briefly briefly introduction and explanation of the data set used in this book. So actually, this is also another another kind of overview of what's what this book is about, and then uh, how how the data set we're gonna use to run the some of the techniques mentioned in this book. So yeah, let's start working on that. Cause uh, this one, this chapter four is uh, just based mostly basically about the explore what is called the exploratory data analysis, which is uh, we just uh, describe and visualize the data set and then uh, see what's in there and then uh, what kind of a uh, variable or maybe variables uh, are associated or related with the prediction of the outcome. So in this chapter, he says that this book gonna be used the three main data set, you know, as you can see here, three data set, which is the one of the data set is the Titanic data set, like the Titanic to calculate the probability of the survival rate for the passengers from the dead. Uh, Titanic, Titanic accident like a iceberg cl uh, clash, and then, and then the other one is the data set about the housing prices, especially apartment prices. Is the Basha in Poland is a Poland data set, and then it's also gonna be used for the house how we can use the some of the machine learning technique to predict the housing prices. And then my final one is the predicting the value of the football play players, like uh, their annual annual wages or their their bonuses kind of things based on the FIFA data set. Like, uh, so these three data set are gonna be used. And then the first one is uh, actually about the kind of uh, predictive techniques for the binary dependent variable. Cause uh, we actually try to calculating about the probability of the survival, like, uh, like a yes or no kind of a question. And then the second one is the prices of apartment is, is a kind of a continuous, continuous variable kind of things, like a prediction of the continuous dependent variable. And then the third one is a kind of a, all of them, like a, just kind of a mixed approaches to introduce the, of the DS book, okay? So let's start with a short introduction of the first data set, which is the Titanic. So in this chapter, actually, uh, the book actually explained about the first two data set, which is one is the Titanic one, and then the other one is the housing prices in Barsha in Poland. So 4.1 actually explained about the uh, Titanic uh, accident, like uh, as we know, it's about the more than 1,500 500 people died as a consequences of the iceberg collision. You know, you you maybe have you seen uh have you seen uh, the movie called Titanic like uh uh like uh, acted by who like uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet? Have you seen that movie before? <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that I movie definitely have. Yeah, that movie actually explained about the, what's happening about the Titanic one. Okay, so so that's the kind that's the data set, and then uh, that data set actually contains about the all of the passenger information, and then uh, or whether whether a passenger survive or not. Okay, so here are here is the kind of a nine different variable, and then. As you can see, this survive variable, like a categor categorical factor variable, like a yes or no kind of binary responses. So this one is our our outcome variable, or maybe dependent variable. And then the other A variable is actually independent. Or maybe some of the maybe country or embarked are gonna be the some kind of a control variable. Okay. So so these are the kind of a how this data set look like, like a gender, age, 
Age is a kind of a count or interval variable, and then a class is a categorical. Embarked also where they actually uh, get in the ship is a kind of also categorical. Fair is actually highly continuous, and sibling kind of things also count variable, parents and children, and survive, okay? And then every time we actually, before we doing the some of the modeling analysis, the, the very first thing we need to do is the two things. One is the kind of a data pre-processing. That's the, that's the main step. And then second one might be the EDA, like exploratory data analysis. But sometimes we actually do these things both. While we try to do the pre data pre-processing, we to to make the to make our data pre-processing more effectively, we sometimes use the, this EDA, like a data visualization a lot to uh to make the our data pre-processing more, more uh, finishing completely more e effectively. So we actually do do these two things actually interchangeably and at, doing at the same time. But anyway, so data pre-processing pre in here, actually they, uh, the book actually tried to do the, what is called the simple inferior imputation technique. So what does that mean is uh, when we looking at the, this data set, there is a sum of the missing value means there is a no data available. So in that case, they actually put some mean variable, like a mean of the observed variable for the those missing variable. So it is a very, very, very simple approaches. Because uh, simple and imperial empirical technique, actually there is uh, some uh, several different types of the, this imputation technique. As you can see here, maybe we most of the time we actually put the mean in the that those missing variable, or maybe we can sometimes put the mode variable. So that means the most frequent frequency variable, or maybe median can be possible, but or or what we can do is a more like a complicated complicated imputation technique. Maybe we can use the regression. For the for the missing missing variable, or maybe we can even we can do the st structure equation modeling to feed in the those missing variable, depending on the pattern of the other other different kind of a uh, 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 independent variable, and then how those things gonna be effective. Uh, affected to the uh, determine the those kind of missing value. These are the more like a complicated variable uh, approaches to do the to fill in the those missing value. But most of the time, what is the most extreme one is uh, just kind of a list wise deletion. Deletion. That means whenever we have a data set with a missing value, we do not use it for our analysis. But this one can be possible maybe when we have a very larger data set. But in this case, we only have a 2,200 kind of a passenger data set and then every, every passenger data set actually really matters to predicting the survival rate. So in this case, we cannot use the listwise deletion because of that actually high probability to the distorts our results. So that's the reason why this in this case we're gonna use the this simple interior or maybe sometimes thinking about the complicated, maybe complex imputation technique to fill in the those missing value so that we can model, we can predict, we can develop the uh, prediction modeling more accurately. Okay, so that's the how they actually the way the book this book did for the missing value, and then uh, these are the outcome about the histogram. So most of the uh, in case of the age is more like a normal kind of a distribution. So mostly 
passenger between the 20 and 40. And then the fare in this case is that we actually found about the ex, what is called the excessive zero value. The reason why we have a excessive uh, zero value is because there is actually like a ship crew. In, in this case, uh, there is actually a staff or a ship crew. They actually do not have any, do not have to pay their, uh, their fare. So that's the, that's the, they don't have a zero dollars to pay for the fare. So that's the reason why we have a very excessive zero value in this case. Okay. So in this case, we actually have a lot of excessive zero value. So that means maybe log transformation cannot be done because uh, we have uh, too many zero value in here. Maybe we can think about the kind of a uh, kind of a modeling in here about the what is called the zero uh inflated kind of a regression model. Like uh like uh, for example we can try to like uh uh this is actually why what is called the stepwise uh, uh, regression model, which is in the phase one, we can say about the fare is zero or not. And then phase two is if, if fare is not zero, how, what's the linear or what's the relationship between the increase in fare and survival rate. That's the can be done by the another way of the uh, developing the prediction model. But in this book does not mention about the geo inflated because the geo inflated is the mostly about the not the predictive purposes. This one is the most like a assessment or just kind of a monitoring kind of a purposes. So maybe possible or maybe not possible, but anyway. So that's the kind of a way we can looking at the, this kind of a data set and then how we can interpret the, this exploratory data analysis result. So, and then figures 4.2 and 4.5 is actually using to the mosaic plot in this case. So as you can see here, we we when we try to develop the, this mosaic plot. Okay, let me see the chat. Yeah. Uh, okay. So it's a uh, it's a uh, by gender. Actually, there is a kind of a small portion compared to the male. Female is much smaller than the uh uh male passenger. But the thing is. The survival rate of the male is much higher compared to the male, right? And also, when we looking at the looking at the survival rate by age, we can also find that the uh, childrens like age less than five years old has the highest kind of a survival rate. Okay, it is about the women and children first kind of principle. Principle like women and children gonna be survive first. And then the other one we can, the way we can looking at is uh, based on the number of parents or children and sibling and spouses. That also going to be some of the pattern, like, like a higher proportion of the survivor among the one or two parents or children or one or two sibling and spouse aboard, aboard, on, uh, on board. Okay. That's the highest kind of, uh, you know, survival rate going to be uh, identified from the mosaic plot. And also it sometimes shows about the sum of the survival rate by the class. So as you can see here, the first class is the is the highest, highest survival rate compared to the other uh, class. And also what is the interesting to see is in case of the this deck clue, they also have a highest survival rate. So they actually uh, have a highest survival rate in here. And then also category is oldest person gonna be survived, more likely to be survived in the, uh, that accident compared to, compared to the middle age or some younger ones, okay? 
And in here, finally, the this one, like uh, embarked harbor does not see the, any kind of a northward trend. But the thing is, the con in case of the country, we can see that I'm kind of a, a little bit disagree about the, this kind of this kind of a uh, uh, trend, because in here it does not suggest any northward trend in terms of the com uh, country, like uh, where the passenger country come from. But when you're looking at the England, they actually have a highest, uh, highest uh, death rate compared to the other countries. And also United States, passenger from the United States actually have a highest survival rate. So I actually tried to, based on the dead one, actually in here in my R code, I actually reclassifying the those categorical variable with the country. And then when we try to looking at the uh, mosaic plot based on the my new categorical, you can see that compared to the non-US and then the US, there is a kind of a quite significant differences between the survival rate. So passenger from the US tends to be survived much higher compared to the passenger from the non-US. Okay. So that's the kind of a way we okay we can also looking at the our our, our uh, EDA. So in here it says about any northward trend when we just uh, try to country by country like this. But if we only looking at the US versus non-US kind of a categorical approaches, like a binary approaches, as you can see here, there is uh, some of the significant differences in terms of the survival rate. Do you agree with that? Or do you have any comments or any idea about the, my interpretation or some of the question about the, this interpretation? <clears throat> Uh, just thinking out loud here, you know, about your comment about mm -hmm. the folks from the U.S. having a higher survival rate. I seem to recall there was maybe another mm -hmm. variable that was uh, correlated with that, like, you know, the, the class of ticket that was bought. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Right. Right. So maybe it, maybe it, it might be. Yeah, it might be also interesting to see the maybe if we can try yeah. to try to looking at the some of the interaction term. Yeah, like, yeah, uh, I, I guess, you, you know, yeah. it's just it's just a question yeah. about like cause and effect here, right? Like this, um, yeah. there is definitely a correlation with, with state, or sorry, with country and survival rate, yeah. but it, it may be due to uh, this other variable, um, you know, yeah, kind of like the first class US... tickets were up higher or mm -hmm. something on the ship which was amenable oh. to survive, survival after uh, the, the ship hit the iceberg. Or maybe fair, or, or maybe, maybe this U.S. U.S. has U.S. going to be the maybe, maybe crew or not. That might be also interesting to see. So yeah. there might be the several different kind of like other reasons to the why why passengers or people from mm -hmm. US has the high higher survival rate. Maybe as you can as you can say, maybe there might be the they actually purchase the much higher class, pay for the higher class on board. Or maybe maybe they there might be the most of the these US United States people actually crew or something. Yeah, that might be possible. So yeah, it is worthwhile to testing it. So, but the thing is, as you can see here, the book says there is any noteworthy trend gonna be identified. In this statement, I just kind of a little bit disagree about the, this statement because depending on the how we can categorize in this country uh, categorical variable, country variable, we can see there is a, a lot of a different kind of a reason why some country has the highest survival rate or others don't. So yeah, that's my thoughts. So 
Yeah, we can, there is a definitely several other way we can looking at the, okay. these kind of data sets. So I just wanted to show you about another another kind of a way of the interpretation of the explore or uh, explore the these data set, okay? Other than the uh, other than the what this book uh, shows. Okay. Yep. Yep. I think that's great. Yep. The, the uh, I will say that the mosaic plot is something that in practice I almost never use. Uh, I don't know. I, I think mm -hmm. in this example yeah. it helps, but I think you could capture the same thing by doing a bar plot of just you know percentage yeah, right. of percentage right. survived by country. Yeah. Actually, what is the good thing about the mosaic plot is the as you can say this one is actually what is the, just kind of an example of the, what is called the two variable mosaic plot. Mm -hmm. But there is also another 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 type of the mosaic plot for the three variable mosaic plot. So we can actually put into the three different variable in here to the mosaic plot, not in the two. In that case, what is the good thing about the mosaic plot is the as you can say, it is uh, e easy to find about the, this kind of a uh, pattern depending on the this, uh, more than two variable. At the same time, uh, based on the, this kind of pattern, we can also easily identify about the, what kind of uh, interaction term we can ex we need to expect to see to identify the more in-depth relationship in the model. That's the kind of a big way, big uh, of, uh, advantage about the looking at the mosaic plot, but it's still kind of a very hard to interpret. This one is actually simple interpretation, but Depending on the how many categorical variable each variable has, that gonna be give you the more complicated results. So, but anyway, so this one is a very you know, interesting to see. And yeah. I, I really like the Monster mm -hmm. Club in the case mm -hmm. that we know that the Ingram is the majority mm -hmm. of the passengers. So rather mm -hmm. than you need to create another plot to find out that is you can see in just one plot. So it's not really detailed, but for a first view, mm -hmm. to me, it seems okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, so thank you for all the input. So, yeah. So as you can say, EDA, there is a whole different way we can looking at the, this data set, and then uh, those the way we explore or looking at the data set can determine can determine what kind of a modeling or what kind of a analysis technique we have to use later on. Okay. So it is very important to uh to explore the data set from the as many date as many lens as possible. Like uh, try to see, try to looking at the data set and explore it. Uh from the many as many different perspectives as possible. Okay. So so after that, based on the this kind of EDA result, in, in this book says about the how we can conduct the model. So actually in here, uh the book actually introduced about the four different kind of approaches. One is it's a logistic regression model because uh because we have a, a outcome variable is a yes or no, like a binary categorical outcome. So in this case, by using the RMS packages and then by using the LRM, LRM logistic regression model kind of a function, we can actually setting up the yes because uh, we wanted to see about the, what's the survival rate relationship. So yes, and then the gender and then the RCS for the more like a less complicated kind of a age outcome like a, like a more like a kind of a uh, uh, rather than using the age as a continuous variable as it is, we can try to using the RCS like a more like a stepwise change in age, okay? And then class and sibling, etc. And then we can find out the, some of the interesting results. And then also another way we can looking at the kind of a random forest model, like a tree based approaches. What, what kind of a variable is the most relevant to the survival, uh, determine the survival rate or what's the others uh, branches we can thinking about. 
And also another thing is the gradient boost model is the more like a robust kind of approaches to allow us to the avoiding avoiding some of the biases or some of the outlier kind of outcome, controlling those outcome. And also support vector machine model gonna be give us about the more classification kind of a survival yes or no kind of things. All of the these modeling or prediction gonna be give uh, uh modeling can give us about the uh prediction a predictive outcome depending on the what is called our new test data set. Like in case of the Johnny D data, this one is a one single record, but this one is also can be used to the test data set. And then we can try to use the that Johnny D data set as a new data set. And then by using the logistic regression, what's the what's the Johnny D probability of the survival rate gonna be the 0.76, which is a pretty high. Okay. And then what about the what about the predictive outcome for the random forest? It's, it is uh, in case of the random forest, actually it is uh, more likely to be die, to be dead in the accident rather than the survive. And then gradient boosting is uh, also more likely to be survived. And then a uh, vector model also says that the probability is the uh that that passenger is gonna be more likely to be die in the accident. So it is quite very depending on the what kind of uh, modeling we're gonna use. So it is worthwhile to testing about the, why these things happen, okay? So that's the we're gonna do about the later part of the, this book. And then uh, also another thing, testing about the this uh, tally data, like uh, as a new data, test data. This is also another test data set. And then these test data set also allows us to predict the outcome, <laughs> probability of the dead person being survived by using the whole different kind of a model that we actually set up in here. And then it also gave us about the, this kind of a probability outcome, as you can see, okay? And then 4.2.6 is the kind of a explain about the model explainers. So this one is actually what the the uh the D A L E X like the Dalex uh Dalex or Dalex I don't know how I can pronounce this one but this package I think that this explainer is a quite quite a quite a function unique to the this package so because uh, this this package is the kind of a main package is used in this book and then uh. This explain function actually give us about the more kind of an insight of the how how modeling gonna be work the, uh, about the predictive outcome purposes. So these are the kind of uh, argument we have to use like a data is a data frame and why is the object dependent variable. Predict function is the modeling that we actually done before. And then a residual function, verbs, and then these all of the, these other arguments gonna be used, types and label, etc. And then as you can see here, this book actually mentioned about the we can try to explain, try to develop the, this kind of a explainer kind of a model, like this, in case based on the different kind of a modeling approaches, and then how those. Uh, though each model is going to be explained the new data set in terms of the probability of the survival rate. So in this case, I just try to do the one simple one, this one. And then it says about the model explainer has been created. And then when you try to type the that explainer, it is about the data head is these two. And then this is a just kind of a how just model explainer is about. I don't I don't you I don't know about the, how I can use the this one is more in detail, but I hope that this book gonna be explained about the, how this explainer gonna be used to interpret the prediction outcomes 
of the AI modem. Okay, that's another another contents this book gonna be explained uh, throughout the um uh, in the net, in the later chapter next chapters. And then uh, these are the just kind of a I think the reference of about the what kind of a each model where you can find about the each model. So I don't think it is helpful for us to do that. Just looking at, just keep in mind that uh, these are the kind of a, these are the kind of a model that you can you can uh, import into R without typing the those model kind of a formula. But anyway, I just type the formula rather than using these things. Okay. And then the 4.3 actually explained about the how to using the same thing in Python. Because this book actually explained all of the code in R and Python. So maybe those who are interested in working on the Python coding, maybe you can try to use the uh, uh, reticul reticulate packages in R that actually allows you to uh uh to create the python code within the r studio or maybe you can use the just kind of anaconda or jupyter notebook separately <laughs> so either way we'll be fine so but the thing is a uh, 4.3 is uh, just kind of uh, use the just do the same thing in but the thing is how how you can do the same thing for python not r so I'm not cover this one in here because we actually this one is our book club and then uh, we primarily focusing on the R coding rather than the Python. So maybe those who are interested in the Python code, you just uh, feel free to looking at it and then uh, typing it and then uh, see what it looks like. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a, a good call out uh, for for moving forward because you know there are examples in both R and Python. I would say, you know, for folks that really want to dig in there and show Python examples yeah. as we do the walkthrough, that's fine. But like, you know, for, um, yeah. for the sake of time, I'd say we let's, yeah, we are in our book club. So let's focus on R first. And uh, if there's time yeah. to go over Python or you really wanted to cover that, that's fine. But yeah, R, R should be the focus. Yeah, that's the reason why I said that maybe if you really wanted to looking at the these, how these R uh, Python code work, you can just uh, imp or you can just uh, importing loading the library called the reticulate packages in R Studio, and then you can feel free to type the this Python code in R Studio, or maybe you can feel free to use the Anaconda. Okay, so either way, because these actually this Python code also injected the same thing to the when we uh same thing as we did in R. Okay, so just kind of uh, your references. Okay. So let me skip all of the, these things because it's the same thing. And then I will just try to looking at the apartment prices. This one is also quite the same thing uh, compared to the Titanic one. This one is just kind of a matter of the, okay, now we, our, our outcome is continuous variable. So in the Titanic data set, we actually using the survive or not, that is actually binary response variable. But in this case, apartment prices is how we can predict, use the machine learning technique to predict the, this kind of housing prices. And then in terms of the prediction, uh, predicting the housing prices, what is the main question is which model we have to choose. This one is the main key question we have to cover in when we using the these prices. And then as you can see here, there is actually six variable in here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Like a price is the outcome. Our outcome or dependent variable. And then the other five is the independent variable. Right? And then these are the how data look like. And then uh, we can also do the same thing, like uh, explore, exploration about the data set, about the distribution of the apartment prices as a history, you know, histogram based on the this 
prices per square meter, which is the, our outcome variable. And also we can just try to looking at the, some of the scatter plot with a trend line, like a smooth line, like this one. Like a, this one is a kind of what is called a very smooth line for the apartment uh, based on the construction year to the prices. And also we can also looking at the surface square meter and then the prices, like it is more like, a, this one is more like a linear. Right. And also we can also looking at the looking at the relationship like as a bar chart uh what is called this one is uh uh it's a scalar plot, but this one is what this one called is uh uh do anyone can tell tell me about what this plot is? It like looks a, like a kind of like, like a, a box plot, but they're uh, putting all of the yeah, uh, it's a, like a, it. like a this yeah, yeah this one is box, actually box plot or box and whiskers plot, but it's it's a little bit of a alternative formulation yeah. to what we typically see. Oh, uh, this one is a maximum and minimum, and yeah, this one is a seventy five percent and twenty five percent quantile, and this one is actually median, right? What what right. this this plot called right? It's, there is a name on this, box right? Plot. It is box I, plot. Okay, it is a box plot. Okay, so depending on about the, this kind of a number of flow as a kind of a categorical, in this case, flow actually using the, about the categorical variable. And then we have a, this kind of a continuous kind of a crisis outcome as a box plot, okay? So, the, all of the, these kind of uh, outcome gonna be uh, exploratory database gonna be allows us to interpret about the how we can try to develop the model or what's the pattern uh, inside the data set. So easy to understand about the data, what the data look like. Also the same thing for the these kind of box plot. And then we can also do the same after the do the EDA and then the same thing, we're gonna try to develop the model. The first thing we have to do is the linear regression because our outcome variable is actually continuous variable. So we can also easy to use about the linear regression model as a kind of a predictive purposes. And then also another way we can do is the random forest we can do, like uh, depending on the what kind of uh, in the, uh, key exploratory variable can be determined about the price level of the housing. And also support vector model about the, uh, how we can classify about the highest and lowest kind of a prices depending on the other categorical or some of the determinants of the housing relevant, uh, related how relevant variable. And then also we can try to do the some of the modeling predictions based on the all of the these kind of a model and then this gonna be give us about the new new result about the predictive outcome. And then we can also compare these prediction to the actual observed value to see how accurate and then how precise our prediction will be compared to the observed variable, okay? And then model explainer also gonna be explained, but I'm not sure about the, how this one gonna be work. I hope that the, this book is going to be covered, how this explainer is going to be work in the later chapter. And then list of the objects for the all of the these both are going to be important. And then the same thing for the Python code is going to be show up. So I think that this is it. So, so basically, most of the, these chapter actually explain about the basically about the data set uh used in uh throughout the chapter of this book and then uh and then uh, this book actually this chapter actually specifically this book uh this chapter actually shows about the uh, how we can looking at or explore the the these three data set and then uh based on the those interpretation of the exploratory result how we can develop the, our model based on the those exploratory data analysis so I think that this is it. And then let me type end.